Hello once again. Today we shall discuss Paleolithic architecture and sculpture circa 1.5 million to 8000 BC. By the end of the chapter you shall be able to understand the kinds of Paleolithic sculptures and architecture. Understand the materials and techniques used by the Paleolithic man. Appreciate the art forms and the period that they were set in. In this chapter, you will learn the following. Before history, the Stone Age, Paleolithic societies, Paleolithic art characteristics, Paleolithic architecture, tools, sculpture. Humans have been making art for at least 40,000 years, perhaps even longer. Prehistoric art spans a vast period of time and has been discovered in some from throughout much of the world. Prehistory is all of human existence before the emergence of writing. Though long before we know that people were carving objects, painting images and creating shelters and other structures and thereby preserving information for posterity. 30,000 years ago, the Paleolithic man was using techniques such as flacking, chipping and polishing flints into spear points, knives and scrapers. He created sculptures and wall paintings, very virtually important to their makers in terms of everyday survival. Like we do, prehistoric people often represented their world and beliefs through visual images. Art emerged with the appearance and dispersion of Homo sapiens from Africa, Europe, Asia, Australasia and Americas. Paintings, sculptures, engravings and later poetry reveal not only a quest for beauty but also complex social systems and spiritual concepts. Their lifestyles depended on hunting and foraging for food or later on pastoral agriculture. It is possible that earlier peoples might have decorated their bodies and clothes or marked trees or features in the landscape but if they did evidence of that art has not survived. Recognizable art dates from at least 30,000 BC in Europe, Africa, Australia and South America. Surviving works of Stone Age painting are found upon natural rock surfaces, while Stone Age sculpture is represented mainly by small carvings in stone, bone, ivory and clay. Let us now talk about the Stone Age. To organize the vast time span of prehistory, scholars divide the Stone Age in Western Europe into three periods. Paleolithic from the Greek words paleos means old 
and lithos means stone is earliest and the longest it lasted from circa 1.5 million to circa 8000 bc the mesolithic middle stone period extended from around 8000 to 6000 bc in the southeastern europe and circa 8000 to circa 4000 bc in the rest of europe the neolithic new stone period dates from circa 6000 to 4000 bc to circa 3000 bc and continued for another 1000 years in northwestern europe The designation of these periods as Stone Age derives from the use of stone tools and weapons. As technology developed, metal replaced stone for many purposes. Then, as now, technological and social change went hand in hand, bringing the Stone Age to a gradual close. The Paleolithic period or Stone Age was the longest phase of human history. Its most outstanding feature was the development of the human species, Homo sapiens. Paleolithic peoples were generally nomadic, hunters and gatherers who sheltered in caves, used fire and fashioned stone tools. Their cultures are identified by distinctive stone tool industries. By the upper Paleolithic, there is evidence of communal hunting, constructed shelters, and belief systems centering on magic and supernatural. Rock carving and painting reached their peak in the Magladian culture of Cro-Magnon man. The Mesolithic period or Middle Stone Age began at the end of the last glacial era over 10,000 years ago. Cultures included gradual domestication of plants and animals, formation of settled communities, use of the bow and development of delicate stone, microliths and pottery. The time periods and cultural content of the Neolithic period or the New Stone Age vary with geographic location. The earliest known Neolithic culture developed from Natufian in southwestern Asia between 9000 and 7000 BC. People lived in settled villages, cultivated grains, and domesticated animals, developed pottery, spinning and weaving, and evolved into the urban civilization of the Bronze Age. In Southeast Asia, a distinctive type of Neolithic culture cultivated rice before 2000 BC. New World peoples independently domesticated plants and animals and by 
1500 BC, Neolithic cultures existed in Mesoamerica that led to the Aztec and Inca civilization. Paleolithic societies. A typical Paleolithic society followed a hunter-gatherer economy. Humans hunted wild animals for meat and gathered food, firewood and materials for their tools, cloths and shelters. The adoption of both technologies, clothing and shelter, cannot be dated exactly, but they were key to humanity's progress. As the Paleolithic era progressed, dwelling became more sophisticated and more elaborate and more house-like. At the end of the Paleolithic era, humans began to produce works of art such as cave paintings, rock art and jewelry and begin to engage in religious behaviors such as burial and rituals. Let us now discuss characteristics of Paleolithic art. Concerned itself with either food, hunting scenes, animal carvings or fertility, Venus figurines, its predominant theme was animals is considered to be an attempt by Stone Age peoples to gain some sort of control over their environment, whether by magic or ritual. Represents a giant leap in human cognition, abstract thinking. The critical abilities that set modern humans apart from all of their predecessors were cognitive ones. Indeed, Homo sapiens as a species outlasted Neanderthals was because they had the mental capacity to solve problems of human survival. The new cognitive abilities included in recognizing and benefiting from variations in natural environment and in managing social networking and alliance making, skills that enabled organized hunting. The most important new ability, however, was the capacity to think symbolically, to create representational analogies between one person, animal or object and another and to recognize and remember those analogies. This cognitive development marks the revolutionary origin of art. Let us now turn to Paleolithic architecture. While earlier humans lived in Africa and Asia, the receding ice age and the extensive climate changes that occurred in Europe during these years set the stage for dramatic changes in the life of Nindarthal and cro magnon humans, which allowed for a more settled lifestyle and more extensive form of shelter. As early as 380,000 BC, humans were constructing temporary wood huts. Other types of houses existed. These were more frequently campsites 
in caves or in open air with little in way of formal structure the oldest examples are shelters within caves followed by houses of wood straw and rock a few examples exist of houses built out of bones they made tools of bone and antler carved with images of animals and other organic forms while also painting images of hunting scenes on the internal walls of caves such images not only reveal a socially organized society but one that demonstrates the earliest form of an aesthetic context in such creations the house structures are typically oval huts made of branches animal hides or even bone with a hearth in center larger huts might have more than one fire pit with the interior space sectioned into different task areas all the most wooden dwellings do not survive over time a paleolithic village excavated at majerich in the ukraine dated to around 15000 bc and reveals a cluster of huts made of woolly mammoth bones the bones provided an intricate framework for structures that were probably covered by animal height the huts range in diameter from 13 to 33 feet and 15 huts have been excavated revealing ashes and charred bones in some cases the dirt floors were colored with powdered ochre in the upper paleolithic period humans in some regions used great ingenuity to build shelters that were far from simple in woodlands evidence of floors indicate that circular or oval huts of light branches and heights were built they measured as much as 15 to 20 feet in a diameter modern tents to accommodate six people vary from 10 by 11 foot ovals to 14 by 7 foot rooms created settlements of up to 10 houses using the bones of the now extinct woolly mammoth whose long curving tusks made excellent roof supports and arched door openings this bone framework was probably covered with animal hides and turf most activities centered around the inside fire pit or hearth where food was prepared and tools were fashioned larger houses might have had more than one hearth and spaces were set aside for specific uses working stone making clothing sleeping and dumping refuse caves caves are the most famous example of paleolithic shelters though the number of caves used by paleolithic people is drastically small relative to the number of hominids 
thought to have lived on earth at the time. Most hominids probably never entered a cave, much less lived in one. Nonetheless, the remains of hominid settlements show interesting patterns. Paleolithic humans made tools of stone, bone, and wood. The earliest Paleolithic stone tool industry, the old one, was developed by the earliest members of genus Homo, such as Homo habilis, around 2.6 million years ago. Lower Paleolithic humans used a variety of stone tools including hand axes and choppers. Fire was used by lower Paleolithic man as early as 300,000 or 1.5 million years ago and possibly even earlier by the early lower Paleolithic older one man. However, the use of fire only became common in the societies of the following Middle Stone Age, Middle Paleolithic period. During the Upper Paleolithic, further inventions were made, such as the net, circa 22,000 or 29,000 BC, Wallace, the near thrower, circa 30,000 BC, the bow and arrow, circa 25,000 or 30,000 BC. And the oldest example of ceramic art, the Venus of Dolny Weston East, circa 29,000 to 25,000 BC, domesticated sometime between 30,000 BC and 14,000 BC, presumably, presumably to aid in hunting. Throughout the Paleolithic, over time, stone tools provide evidence of increasing. Selection of materials, use of cutting edge, symmetry, investment of effort, diversity and number of techniques, number of steps, complexity of stages, and diversity and number of different tool types. The site of Dolny Westonis is important because it makes a very early date, 23,000 BCE, for humans to use fire to make durable objects out of mixtures of water and soil. The uniqueness of this sculpture lies in its manufacturing. The Dolny Westonis Fragments are records of performance and process art in their rawest and earliest forms. The carver captured the essence of a head, or what psychologists call the memory image, those generalized elements that reside in our standard memory of a human head. An egg-shaped breast atop a long neck, a wide nose and strongly defined proline suggests deep set eyes and an engraved square patterning maybe hair or hair rest. The image is an abstraction, what has come to be known as abstract art. The reduction of shapes and appearances to basic yet recognizable forms that are not intended to be exact replications of nature. The result in this case looks uncannily modern to the contemporary viewers. Today, 
when such a piece is isolated in a museum case or as a book illustration we enjoy it as an aesthetic object but we lose its original cultural context perhaps the most famous paleolithic sculpture is the so called venus of vlindorf a striking figure carved out of limestone and variously dated from 25000 to 21000 bc the rhythmic arrangement of bulbous oval shapes emphasizes the head breast torso and thighs the scale of these elements in relation to the whole is quite large while the facial features neck and lower legs are virtually eliminated the arms resting on the breast are so undeveloped as to be hardly noticeable clearly the artist emphasized those parts of the body related to the reproduction and nursing for the more comparison of the front with the side and back shows that although the venus is a sculpture in the round more attention has been lavished on the front the exaggeration of the breast and pelvis has led some scholars to conclude in venus of willendorf represented a fertility goddess reinforcing this reading are traces of red pigment that may have been associated with child birth red ochre possibly symbolizing blood was sprinkled on corpses and objects of personal adornment such as necklaces were buried with them bodies were arranged in the fetal position often oriented towards the rising sun which must have seemed reborn with each new day such practices suggest a belief in life after death in addition to female figurines paleolithic artists produced small sculptures of animals most often found are horses bison and ox less frequently found are deer mammoths antelope boar rhinoceros foxes wolves bears and an occasional fish or bird these like the paintings of animals reflect the naturalism of paleolithic animal art Upper Paleolithic peoples created both relief sculptures in which an image is carved into a flat surface a fully three dimensional sculpture in round sculpture include small figurines humans and animals and jewelry that is pendants beads carved from stone bone ivory and clay relief carvings were executed upon both portable objects and natural rock surfaces sculpture in relief is more pictorial than sculpture in the round because some of the orient because some of the original material remains and forms a background plane there are different degrees of relief in high relief the image stands out relatively far from the background plane in low relief the surface of the image is closer to the background plane the reliefs can also be sunken and incised in which case the image or its outline is slightly 
recessed into the surface plane. 